Yes, is an Emmy nominated and Golden Globe winning actor who became a tween idol as the breakout star of the hit show Glee when he was just 18 years old. He was recognized as one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time Magazine for living by extreme truth and speaking out against the epidemic of bullying. And he's inspiring young readers to do the same with his number one New York Times best-selling fantasy adventure novels, The Land of Stories, and its prequel series, A Tale of Magic. He just released his 18th book, A Tale of Sorcery, which promises to be a page-turning adventure with heroes, villains, sorcery, science. And here to tell us all about it, please welcome the man behind the pen, Chris Colfer. Hey! Hi, Chris. How are you? Listen. Great. Oh, my God. I, I love getting lit. Thank you so much I, for having me. <laughs> we love getting lit, too. Listen, congratulations. The new book, this novel is the third book in your A Tale of Magic series. You've always combined elements from the modern world with the magical fairy tale world, but taking it to the series level, what was that like for you? Because you just got to keep writing over and over, I imagine, and creating constantly. Yes, it's for me, it's been a very, very th uh, therapeutic process. Um, my first series, uh, The Land of Stories, uh, was really just a, uh, a big adventure that celebrated storytelling. Um, and now with my new series, uh, The Tale of Magic series, um, uh, I really have tried to take things in life that are currently bothering me and try to create a story off of that that hopefully um, helps young people and um, gives them tools to deal with this crazy world that we're living in now. Listen, in your book, you have a quote from another writer saying, magic is a science we don't understand yet. What mm -hmm. did you want to introduce in this book, especially to your point where you're focusing in a way on current events and things happening now? Yes, yeah. So in the Tale of Magic series, I'd say everything is an allegory for a, a bigger theme. Um, for the first one, A Tale of Magic, uh, everything was an allegory for oppression and, and um, uh, prejudice. And, and hopefully it gave uh, kids some tools of how to cope with those things in their own environments. Uh, the second book, A Tale of Witchcraft, everything was an allegory for mental health. And I hope I gave um, some kids some uh, help on how to deal with things like depression and anxiety. Um, and in this one, it's a little more on the nose because everything is about the uh, the, the war on science uh, yeah. that we're seeing right now. And um, hopefully I, 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 I'm helping kids uh, uh, learn how to differentiate um, fact from pride. Right. Um, and, and I give them the tools to, to hopefully know the difference. You've hit on a lot of things with that. I mean... <laughs> You use the word pride. I know that when you were creating this world, there were people who said that kids are not ready to read a book by an openly gay man, which I'm stunned that anyone mm -hmm. would say in this day and age, mm -hmm. and that you would fail as an author. So here you not mm -hmm. only prove them wrong uh, about that, but you also then take on fact of science, which is very controversial, shouldn't be, but it is. Right. And you're, <laughs> you are introducing kids to this, this real conversation with fantasy, were you worried that, ah, oh, they can't digest this? I, I've never been worried that the kids can't digest it because kids are so much smarter than I was <laughs> <laughs> nowadays. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes I am worried that, that their parents might not um, accept um, a, a theme or two. Um, and I might get an angry letter here or there. Um, but um, yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting. I've never once worried about the kids. I've always worried about more, more the, the parents and, and the librarians that might, um, that might disagree with me mm. on, on, on certain morals or, or whatnot. So you just finished your virtual tour. Most of the time you host these in person, but we were able to catch up with a few of your fans and I wanna play what they had to say. Hi, Chris. My name is Blair. My name is Kaylee. This is Dorothy speaking. My name is Abigail. My name is Elena and I am one of Chris Colfer's biggest fans. Due to COVID, I was not able to go to school or see my friends. But that's when I discovered your series and I've been reading it ever since. I love reading his books because they have all the fairy tales in them. He's inspired me to make me become an author when I grow up. The characters have a special place in my heart that cannot be replaced. The books inspired me to write my own fantasy novels. You've been a huge inspiration in all my writing. Thank you. You're the one that helped me get it started. Thank you, Chris, for making stories fun and exciting for older kids. Keep writing. Bye! 
And Chris, we have two of your super fans with us, and they actually have questions. Alina and her mom, Liz, Blair, and her dad, Casey, are <laughs> here, and they've decided they want to take my job. So, Alina, <laughs> you're 10 years old. In that video, we just heard you say you are one of his biggest fans. What do you want to ask Chris? A question I've always wanted to ask Chris is, which character do you really relate to the most? Oh my gosh. Uh, I love Mother Goose from the Land of Stories <laughs> books. Um, she's, you know, she's a wacky old lady, and for some reason that's that's what I identify with. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, sometimes if I'm if I'm a little hungry, I I, I identify with the villains. Oh, <laughs> very that's a very good question, Alina. Blair, you're up, you're in the fifth grade. In the video, you say that you discovered Chris's books during the pandemic and haven't put them down since. What do you want to ask him? I just want to ask, like, what inspired you to start writing? Because your books are very hope lifting and funny. So I've always wanted to ask what inspired you to start writing them. Oh, thank that's a great question. Um, you know, I just, I've always loved uh, escapism um, and um, leaving reality and, and having an adventure, you know, adventures that I couldn't have in, in this world. And, and so um, I got to a point when I was a kid uh, that I, I loved reading so much. I just, I just wanted to start creating my, my own adventures and my, my own worlds and, and characters. Um, and, uh, it was also very, very, um, entertaining for me to, to, to do that. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad you guys, you guys are enjoying Aww. them so much. That me, that mission accomplished. Thank you. Oh, that is so sweet. So listen, <laughs> I know that Blair and Alina have to go back to school. So you owe Aunt Tamron for this? Now go get some A's, okay? Thank you for joining us. Go back to class now. Go back. Thank you. So, I mean, Chris, for you, because you've been putting out about, what is it, two books a year for a while. You've got up to 18. When you look at, from the moment you start, I mean, you have this great career, Glee, the stage, everything. Do you put this above some of the acting work as your greatest creation, your greatest work? Sometimes, yeah, I, I, I really, I think it, it just really depends. Um, uh, I, I think the best thing that I've ever done in life is inspire other kids to write, mm. um, because I know how um, valuable that was for me, and and how writing really just really saved my life um, many, many times. Um, so the fact that I've uh, inspired other other kids to put pen to paper, I think, is is the is, is the greatest thing I'll I'll ever do. Oh, that is so beautiful. It is. And, you know, I know that you don't just write about magic, as I understand. You're a huge paranormal fan in real life. What's your number one sci-fi show? What's your Halloween costume? I got a lot of questions here. Oh, God, I love... I think The Conjuring is, is probably my favorite oh. scary movie. Um, I love Penny Dreadful, which was which was on Showtime. Ooh, yes. Um, uh, and um, uh, this year, I think I'm going to be Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. You gave away your costume! <laughs>